This is a beginner guide for Subtlety Rogue in patch 10.2 and 10.2.5 for both Raiding and Mythic Plus, and I can promise you there is going to be no information overload, and this is going to be as straightforward as it can be. Starting off then, let's have a look at the stat priority we're going to be following, and that is going to be eye level and agility over everything else, okay? Especially as a beginner, we don't want to be worrying too much about secondary stats. However, if you do have an item that is the same item level as another item, this is the priority you're going to follow. With mastery up first, then versatility, critical strike, and lastly, haste. Now, if you do want to start min-maxing and all of that, then it is going to depend on the percentages you have, and these stats may change a little bit. But as I said, for beginners, just go for eye level and agility over everything else. Regarding talent trees, this one on the left is for raiding and single target. The one on the right is more versed towards Mythic+. Plus. There's an import string down below in the description, so you can put this straight into your game. I'm not going to go through over all of the talents. However, I am going to talk about some of the core and important ones when we go through the rotation. Again, so that there's no information overload. Before we do go into that rotation, however, let's look at some of the really exciting cooldowns that we have in our toolbox, toolbox as a subtlety rogue. First up being Shadow Blades. This is going to increase our damage and combo point generation. If you're not sure what combo points are, well, as a rogue, there are three parts to our resources. The first one is energy, and we're going to spend energy on combo point builders. That's going to build up combo points, and then we're going to have combo point finishers, which are going to use all our combo points to deal big burst damage. Next cooldown is Shroud of Concealment. This is really awesome. Big circular area for you and your party. It's going to put you all into stealth so you can sneak past enemies. Very good in Mythic Plus, especially, I would say. Evasion gives you 100% dodge chance for 10 seconds. Really great defensive. Cloak of Shadows is going to give you immunity and removal of all harmful magic effects. And lastly, Vanish, where you can go into stealth in combat. As a rogue, we do actually want to be going into stealth or get the benefit from stealth as much as possible. Vanish being one of the ways we can do that. A few other little ones here is Crimson Vile. Not as good, but it is a great defensive still. Heals 20% of your health over the next four seconds. And Flagellation, which causes combo points, also do an additional bleed, and it's going to increase your mastery. Rogues do have an exceptional amount of utilities at their disposal as well, but I'm not going to go through them all in this video again because there's so many and it's just going to be overwhelming. But, you know, you've got things like distract, you've got things like faint, cheap shot, blind, pick locks. There's so many sap. There's an insane amount. Um, a few that I would actually say is sprint. You can use this to increase your movement speed by 100% for 12 seconds and you can use it while stealthed. This is a really great um, speed increase when you're in combat, out of combat, need to just get somewhere faster. You've also got your poisons. You can put your instant poison onto your weapons, have this active at all times. And then we have kick, which is on a 15 second cooldown. This is your interrupt, quick kick that interrupts spell casting and prevents any spell from being cast in that school for three seconds. That's that's your basic interrupt there. But all of the other ones, same with the talents. Once you're much more used to the rotation and the spec, then go through these and see how it all works together. Because to master a spec, you do need to know what you've got in your toolbox. But as a beginner, we just want to look at the core ones and what's really important. So let's actually get into the rotation itself. First of all, let's take a look at my UI because there's a few things I want to talk about here. That being this weak aura in the center of the screen. If you don't know what that is, it's an add-on. You can do cool things like this. It's going to show and visualize all of our cooldowns and buffs, etc. So we can track them along with our resources all in one place. So if I use this spell here, you can see um, this little red bit has filled. And if I use it again, two more. These are our combo points. And in subtlety with the talent tree we're going for, we can actually have seven combo points. You can see when I spend... Uh, this I'm using backstab here, number one on my action bar. When I spend that or use it, you can see I'm using my energy. So this is energy. These are your combo points. And then we're going to use number four here, eviscerate, to spend all of those seven combo points. You can see here on my action bar at number four, when we use eviscerate, the finishing move, you can see at one point it does three and a half thousand damage. At two points, it does more damage. Up to seven points where it does a lot more damage, etc., etc. And that is how your resources work as a rogue. So starting off with Raid and Single Target, this is the talent tree here. Again, it's the one in the description. And I want to go through a few talents because 
when we're actually looking at the rotation, this is where it could get confusing. There's a short part of the rotation that we're going to be doing when we're either not in stealth or shadow dance, more on that in a second. And then there's a part of the rotation we'll be following when we are in stealth or shadow dance. So the reason we want to get into stealth as much as possible are for these reasons here. Shadow Runner, while Stealth or Shadow Dance is active, you move 20% faster. Your abilities requiring Stealth can still be used for three seconds after Stealth breaks. So you start off combat in Stealth, use you know your Stealth rotation, and that's going to break Stealth. But for three seconds, you can still use those abilities. Coming down to here then, Night Stalker, while Stealth or Shadow Dance is active, abilities deal 10% more damage. And then Shadow Dance itself allows the use of Stealth abilities and grants all the combat benefits of Stealth damage by 30% isn't broken by taking damage or doing damage, you get two charges of this. So TLDR then, we want to be getting into stealth as much as possible. Main way we're going to be doing that is Shadow Dance. It's going to mean, woohoo, we can do stealth. If you're not used to a rogue or stealth, um, if you see my action bar down the bottom here, you can actually see that I have you know certain buttons on my action bar. When I go into stealth, that top bar is going to change. Um, so you can have a stealth action bar and a non-stealth action bar and blizzard does this by default so you're going to kind of want to set your action bars up in that manner to start then is i'm actually going to explain this in a bit of a backwards way because that's how it's going to be most straightforward so when you go into combat you're always going to start combat in stealth because of the reasons we just said however this rotation is going to make more sense if i start you off with but you're not in stealth. um so i hope that makes sense so when we are either not in stealth or shadow dance, this is the rotation we are going to be using because this is the simplest part. So backstab at number one on my action bar here is going to be our combat, sorry, combo point builder. Use it. We're going to generate those combat points. Backstab is going to be the combo point builder that we're going to be using when we're not in stealth or shadow dance. And then as you can see here, we've got all of our combo points. Now, what finishers are we going to use and in what order so i've actually put them on the action bar in the order we're going to use them first one we're going to use is slice and dice so we're going to press two and use our combo points to get slice and dice you can see on the weak aura that's up for five seconds combo, combo points for that what slice and dice is is it increases your attack speed and we want to keep this up at all times now if you're saying or wondering how many combo points do i want to use for this i would advise that when you're at six or above so at six or seven that's when you should use it you can see here we can refresh our slice and dice by using up those combo points and it's gonna be up for a minute now and we want to keep that up at all times because that is keeping our attack speed as fast as it can we have our combo points then and we've got you know slice and dice up our next one is going to be rupture finishing move that tears open the target dealing bleed damage so we're going to then use that. And you can see on my weak aura, Rupture is now up. So Slice and Dice and Rupture are both active on the target. I'm going to keep that up at all times as well, of course. Outside of that, then, we're going to simply use Eviscerate. This one here at number four on my action bar. This is going to be our filler finisher. So Backstab is the filler combo point builder. And then Eviscerate is going to be the spender. So just to go over that one more time, then, using Backstab to generate combo points. Keep slice and dice up. We're going to get our rupture up and keep that up. And then outside of that, we're going to use eviscerate as our spender. So now let's look at what we're going to do when we are going into shadow dance. So where backstab was only the filler in non shadow dance, we're not actually going to be using it as such when we're in shadow dance. It's going to have a more niche reason for using it. First things first, let's look at this cooldown here, Flagellation. We're going to lash the target, causing each combo point spent within 12 seconds to lash for an additional amount of damage. Dealing damage with it increases your mastery. So TLDR, the combo points we're not generating, but spending with our finishers for the next 12 seconds after using this are going to do an even higher amount of damage. So when you're going to want to use this cooldown is when you've already got those combo points built up ready to spend. We're also only going to use Flagellation if this other spell here, Shadow Blades, is available to use. Draws upon surrounding shadows to empower your weapons, causing your attacks to deal 20% additional damage a shadow, causing your combo point generators to generate full combo points for 20 seconds. So what we're going to do 
is use flagellation, then use shadow blades. Then we can use our shadow dance. We go into here and then we're going to use our backstab. So when shadow blades is active, use that backstab. You can see here we're generating. Um, if I go into shadow dance again, you can actually see that when I use different spells, I'm generating a buff here. See that when I use more spells, it gets an extra buff. What is that you wonder? Well, it's this here, Dance Macabre or the Dance of Death. Shadow Dance increases the damage of your attacks that generate or spend combo points by 6%, increased by an additional for each different attack used. So if you're wondering, like, what? Basically, when you use Shadow Dance, every different attack you use is going to make Dance Macabre. So if I use Backstab, I get one stack of Dance Macabre. If I use Eviscerate, I get a second stack, etc. I use Shadow Strike, which is going to be our filler when we're in stealth or shadow dance here you can see here shadow strike is our, our our filler combo point generator each different spell is actually gonna give us an extra stack of dance macabre and therefore we're gonna do more and more damage then our priority combo point spender is gonna be this a secret technique it makes clones of yourself to do more damage we obviously want to be using that when we're doing as much damage as possible hence wanting at least three stacks of dance macabre before we use it so Let's just recap that. When we're in Shadow Dance, we're going to use our backstab to generate a stack of Dance Macabre, ideally with Flagellation and Shadow Blades active, which we're going to use together. Remember to use Flagellation. Already got all your combo points ready to spend. We're going to use Backstab to create a Dance Macabre stack. We're going to use our Shadow Strike to create a Dance Macabre stack, and also our Eviscerate make another stack that's going to give us three stacks we want a minimum of three stacks to then use our secret technique and you make clones of ourselves and use that as a finisher is on a one minute cooldown so again same as when we're out of shadow dance use eviscerate as your filler spender okay so i'm just going to recap that again when we're in shadow dance we use flagellation shadow blades pretty much on cooldown or um backstab and then shadow strike and then eviscerate, get our dance macabre stacks up, and then use secret technique as our finisher. And then outside of that, shadow strike is going to be our filler for generating combo points. Eviscerate is going to be our filler if you put that for spending combo points. When we do go into shadow dance, you're going to want to use it with this uh, cooldown here, or if you call it a cooldown, 25 seconds, basically do more damage. Use Shadow Dance with Symbols of Death. Same with Secret Technique. With this cooldown here, Cold Blood increases the crit strike of your next damage of damaging ability by 100%. Use Cold Blood and then use Secret Technique. So what we're trying to do is maximize our Secret Technique damage. So again, to recap it, Shadow Dance and Symbols of Death. And then we're going to use Flagellation and Shadow Blades. Then Backstab. Then I would use Shadow Strike. Then I would use Eviscerate. Then I would use Shadow Strike to build up those combo points again and then use our secret technique with Cold Blood. I know it's a lot. Let's try and do it really quickly to show you. So we're going to do Shadow Dance and that one. And then we're going to use these cooldowns. Here, we're going to get that. You can see we've got three stacks of Dance Macabre and boom, we're going to use our secret technique. It's actually quite fast. Remember, you are going to try and have things like Slice and Dice and also your rap Rupture up when we're doing this as well. Um, again, let's show it again with Shadow Dance. We can't use these because it's on cooldown, of course, and use now again our Symbols of Death, which we can always use with Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance and Symbols of Death. I'm going to use our Backstab, and then I'm going to use our um, Shadow Strike here. You can see we've now got three stacks of Dance Macabre, so we would want to use our Secret Techniques. Because I'm talking, obviously I'm doing it slower. We've gone out of Shadow Dance. We didn't get a chance to use it. Obviously, you're not going to be chatting away and doing it slowly when you do it. So I can show you one more time here. Now that it's come back off, just wait for Symbols of Death, because again, you're going to want to use this together. So Shadow Dance, Symbols of Death, get your um, backstab out, and we're going to use the um, Cold Blood, and then use our Secret Technique, because we had at least three stacks of Dance Macabre. Outside of that, if you Shadow Dance still, can you Eviscerate Shadow Strike to build combo. Hopefully that was as straightforward as it could be. This is like such a confusing spec for new players to learn, I feel. It's not an easy one. Check out my Assassination or Outlaw videos if you are struggling with this. They are definitely simpler. Outside of that, don't forget you can use your Vanish. 
allowing you to vanish from sight, entering stealth while in combat for the first three seconds after vanishing. Damage and half feel, harmful effects received won't break stealth. So you've got three seconds then. When you then do break the stealth, you've got another three seconds to still use those, still use those abilities, remember. Um, so let's just recap the whole thing on single target. When you are not in Shadow Dance, it's going to be backstab here for your, and you want to be behind the target, so technically like, arcs on target dummy, do more damage. Backstab is going to be your combo point generator. You want to keep up slice and dice, that's your first finisher. Also rupture, keep that up. Then the filler is going to be eviscerate. When we go into shadow dance, which we can use here, we're going to use it with symbols of death. We're going to use our backstab with flagellation and shadow blades. And our shadow strike, we've got three sacks of dance macabre, so we can use our secret technique. And outside of that, eviscerate is going to be our filler cooldown. Whew, I don't know how I managed to get that in while talking. Well, just about, anyway. <laughs> um, but that's going to be it for single uh, target. Now let's have a look at multi-target. I'm going to show you quickly the talent tree changes. When we go to Mythic Plus or AoE, you can see there's a few here that are changing. One up here is Shuriken Storm now has an additional 15% to crit. Um, and it's critical strikes apply weakness. Another one that's really important here is Shuriken Tornado. Focus intently, then release a Shuriken Storm every second for the next seconds. There's not going to be many changes to the AOE rotation. I'm only going to talk about the actual changes we're making to the rotation so that this is straightforward to be. Outside of Shadow Dance, then, we're going to use Shuriken Storm, like we have here six on my action bar like this it's very cool this is going to be our combo point builder for aoe and then quite simply for our spender we're going to use as a priority black powder which is this one here finishing move that launches explosive black powder at enemies dealing physical damage reduce damage beyond eight targets all nearby targets with your find find weakness suffer an additional 30 percent damage as shadow and then shuriken storm sprays shurikens everywhere again Reduced beyond eight targets and crits with this will apply find weakness, which works so well with black powder. And then also when you have symbols of death active, use your shuriken tornado. That's when we're going to use this one. It's a one minute cooldown where you this ta-da and fire out loads of shurikens. Um, really, that is the only main changes I would say to use when you're in shadow dance. Then again, you can use black powder as the combo point spender as well and that is pretty much the only main differences that i want to go over as a beginner i will look at two more things quickly before we wrap this up which is your mastery and the set bonus for this season it doesn't really change much because it's going to be all worked into what i've just shown you but just want you to be aware of it first of all is our mastery and that's going to increase the damage done by your finishing moves how exciting this is the set bonus here for Emildrasil tier 31 so using eviscerate rupture or black powder basically has a chance to summon a clone that when you're using those finishes, it's just going to do some extra damage. How exciting. And then the full set, as you can see, further improves that, giving you some extra combo point damage. So that's pretty much it. Again, if you need any help at all, or this was confusing, you need more assistance, we do have some really cool rogues in my Discord, and I can personally help you. Just click that link below. And if you need a one-to-one -one experience or you want to copy in my UI, etc., you can do that with a click of a button if you press the join button below and become a member. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and let me know your thoughts down below.